Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Samara Winton. I'm the Senior Product Manager for Admissions Connect, and I'm excited to welcome you to Release Readiness Live for our Education Cloud Spring 21 release. Let's take a look. Before we get going, we may make some forward-looking statements in our presentation today. I want to give a quick reminder that customers should base all purchasing decisions on the products and features that are currently available. I'm here with three of my colleagues, and we have a lot of exciting updates coming to you in our Spring 21 release. I'm going to share with you the latest application processing features in our newest product, Admissions Connect. Corey Ritvo will then share new functionality in Advisor Link to support group appointments and web meetings. Chris Clark will demo Accounting Subledger for Education Cloud. And finally, Jason Fitzpatrick will share an exciting update for admins in EDA, the ability to run health checks within your org. One quick slide before we jump into our product updates, especially for those of you who may be new to Education Cloud or are just getting started on your journey. Education Cloud is built on top of the Salesforce Customer 360. With Education Cloud, you can drive learner and institution success with one connected platform for lifelong learning. With solutions for recruitment and admissions, student experience, advancement, alumni engagement, and institution operations, Education Cloud creates a single source of truth with 360-degree views across the entire educational journey. And EDA, the education data architecture, is the foundation of that connected journey, transforming the world's number one CRM into the number one CRM for education. No other platform can provide the digital foundation for a connected experience, starting in K-12, going into higher education, and ultimately culminating with alumni engagement and fundraising. It's this kind of personalization and one-to-one -one marketing efforts throughout the student journey that transform learner engagements into lifelong relationships. Plus, the impact of Education Cloud is pretty incredible. In fact, in a recent study we did with Forrester Research, we found that on average, Education Cloud provides a 195% return on investment for institutions with just a seven-month payback period. We're excited to share updates with you today from our products that span this complete life cycle. Let's dive right into Admissions Connect. I'm so proud to announce that Salesforce.org now offers a solution for recruitment and admissions. Admissions Connect brings together applicants, admissions teams, and all the information that passes between them. As of the Spring 21 release, Admissions Connect is available for all educational institutions. The student is always at the center of recruiting and admissions. Their journey starts before campus visits are made and applications are filled out, and Salesforce is the best platform to deliver a holistic and personalized experience. Applicants are not alone. They are accompanied by a network of people who want to see them succeed. Parents, counselors, recruiters, application reviewers, and the staff at prospective schools, all these people work together to support applicants. With the spring release, we are concentrating on making the application accessible to institution staff and the lucky few outside the schools who review applications. Let's see Admissions Connect in action. Let's take a look at an application. Like many students, Marla submitted her application to Connected University via the Common App, and the system admin has imported the data using Salesforce.org's new Education Cloud integration with Common App. As Marla's recruiter, I've taken a special interest in her success, so I want to check on her application before it gets reviewed. We can see that her checklist of required items is not yet complete. Let's take a look at her teacher evaluation, which was required and has not yet been verified. I'm just checking that our documents are authentic, legible, and meet the requirements. Everyone makes mistakes, so we check to make sure that this letter is indeed for Marla and that it comes from what seems like an authentic source. It looks good. I'm going to accept this. Now let's take a look at our counselor recommendation. It isn't required, so it's not a make or break. Mm, this one's not right. I'm going to reject it. Reason? It's not the right document. Here's a note that will be sent to Marla and the submitter so she has a chance to update the document, but it's not required so I can move forward and complete my holistic review. I see my colleagues who are also reviewing Marla's application, including Kali Nguyen, an alumna who volunteers to read applications. She uses the alumni website and Experience Cloud to access the same resources that I see. 
I also have Chatter, where I can collaborate with my teammates right here on the application. I left a note for Regina, another reviewer on my committee. I'm going to continue my formal review. On the application review page, I can see all the tasks, documents, and data I need to make an informed recommendation. A navigable list of items is here on the left. The icons next to each item tell me if they are ready for review. I can see that the counselor recommendation has been rejected. My colleagues will see that too and can pass by until it's ready. I can click to see each item if I want, or I can scroll looking at each item in turn. If I'm tasked with verifying as I review, I can do that from this page as well. I know what I'm looking for because I have the review component. The questions and scoring have been configured by my school to meet the needs of my program. I know exactly what we are looking for in a candidate and I can work at my own pace. I took a look at Marla's application in an initial round of reviews and took some notes. They were saved along with my suggested scores. I'm feeling good about my impressions and I'm going to submit. Done. With Admissions Connect from Salesforce.org, I know that my feedback is immediately available to those who need to know, like the admissions director and the others on my committee. And now that Marla has been admitted, I'd like to pass the mic over to my colleague, Corey Ripo, to talk about how Marla will be supported with the functionality in AdvisorLink. Over to you, Corey. Thanks, Samara. Hi, I'm Corey Ritvo, Senior Product Manager for AdvisorLink. This spring, we're excited to introduce new functionality to enable advisors and students to connect virtually and in groups. Let's take a look. With web meeting automation, if a static web meeting link is provided in the location settings, we'll use that URL to automatically enable a button for advisors in the appointment manager or for students in the community. This will allow our users to join a web meeting with one click. Group availability allows advisors to define availability for group appointments. Now, an advisor can optionally set an attendee limit, allowing multiple students to book in that time slot. In order to take advantage of these great new features, admins will need to enable flexible scheduling and set up security on our custom availability, availability location, availability topic, and related objects. Looking forward to the SFDO Summer 21 release, we will be requiring that flex scheduling is enabled, so we really want to encourage you to migrate to the new model as soon as possible. Flexible scheduling is also available for group appointments. One quick thing I want to call out here is that advisors can select multiple topics or multiple locations for group availability. When the first student books an appointment from that availability, it will lock in the topic and location, meaning only that topic and location will be available for subsequent students who book. This provides a lot of flexibility for advisors, but also opens up the potential for complexity in what topics will be presented to students. You might consider recommending that advisors select a limited number of topics or locations for group availability. With that, let's take a look at the spring features. Before we get started though, I want to resize the appointment manager. If you haven't already done this, we recommend making the appointment manager larger than the default size to accommodate all of the information for group appointments. You can do this by going to setup, selecting the app manager, clicking edit, selecting utility items, and changing the panel width to 1080 by 600. You can find these instructions in our product docs. Okay, so now let's log in as Adam Advisor and take a look at group availability. One way for advisors to scale their time is to meet with multiple students at the same time. And we've heard this need from our customers, especially in the context of career services. In the availability settings, I can now create availability for multiple students to reserve in the scheduling wizard. I'll create a resume review session for five students.
Now, I'll log in as Sophia, select Adam, her career advisor, and resume review as the topic. Here you can see all of Adam's group availability for resume reviews. Sophia can select one of those options and she is now one of the five students who can attend. Group availability also works with the web meeting automation that I will demo next. We'll start by opening the appointment manager and going into availability settings. From here, you can see that we've migrated to the new location model and have in-person, phone, and virtual locations set up. If we go to edit, you can see that I've added a static meeting link in the location record. This is the link that will be automatically enabled in our appointment records. So let's take a look at the advisor's experience. I'm going back into the appointment manager to create a new appointment. I want to meet with Sophia's student on a web meeting. You'll see that when I select web meeting, the URL is automatically populated. I'll fill out the rest of the details, select a time, and hit save. Now, let's go back into the appointment manager and find the appointment we just created. Here, you will see there is a button to join the web meeting, We'll click it and the web meeting will open in a new browser window. Let's take a look now from the student's perspective. I'm logged back into the community as Sophia and can join that same meeting at the time of the appointment with one click. And that wraps up our demo of AdvisorLink. Thank you so much for watching. With that, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Chris Clark. Thanks, Corey. I'm Chris Clark, a senior product manager at Salesforce. Today, I'd like to share with you some exciting updates happening with the Accounting Subledger. Let's check it out. The Accounting Subledger supports the C-suite, particularly the Chief Financial Officer. By doing so, it supports transactions that are happening in Salesforce that need to be shared with the accounting system. Customers can use this for advancement, student billing, payments, application fees, and more. The Accounting Subledger takes this information in Salesforce and translates it into debits and credits, the language used by accounting systems. It supports cash and accrual accounting, it can act as an accounts receivable system, and it manages changes such as adjustments, write-offs, and reversals. I'm excited to announce that as part of our spring release, the accounting subledger now supports creating accounting information based on any object, even custom objects. You can also designate accounting information as either revenue or expense. We call this feature accounting sets. Let's look at a custom object that I created to track ticket revenue from events hosted online for my university. When you click on one of the ticket records, you see the date, cost, some reference information, and the ticket holder's name. You also see which financial account received the money, such as our merchant account, and the fund name is also listed. Let's head over to our Accounting Settings page and find Accounting Sets. Under Accounting Sets, click on Manage Accounting Sets. Here you find a list of each accounting set that is generating information. I'm currently creating accounting data for fundraising and licensing revenue. I'm also generating entries for outbound scholarships, which is reflected as an expense. I'm going to go ahead and create a new accounting set. So I click on Create New Accounting Set. I enter a name for this new accounting set. I'm going to select the one object model, but I can also select sources that need two, three, or even four objects to create data. I find my ticket object and then click Next. In this step, we want to map each of our fields to the appropriate accounting fields that the accounting subledger needs to generate data. And then I click Next. With each of our accounting sets, we're able to determine set-specific setup requirements. For this set, my type is Revenue, since I'm using it to track ticket revenue. You can also choose the order of operations for each accounting set to be run in what order. I'm going to select Today as the accounting record start date and skip over the rest of the setup items and click Save. You can now see our new accounting set. Okay, 
Let's head back to our ticket screen and see which records will be ran. You can now see that ledger entries have been created for all of the ticket revenue. You see the debits and credits that accounting needs, as well as important dates and other account information. And that wraps up the demo of our spring release of the accounting subledger. Passing it on to you, Jason. Thanks, Chris. As mentioned, my name is Jason Fitzpatrick. I'm the product manager for education data architecture, and I have this opportunity to share with you what we're delivering for spring 21 release. So let's jump right in. First, I'd like to take a moment to explain what EDA is. We start with Salesforce Customer 360, on which we build EDA, which transforms Salesforce with an education-focused data architecture, allowing our users to leverage the power of Salesforce for education use cases and be the foundation to foster incredible customer innovation. It is also the foundation of our Education Cloud purpose-built solutions like the ones we just saw, such as Advisor Link and Admission Connect. And it's the foundation of our ISB partners who deliver education-focused apps on Salesforce App Exchange. All right, now on to our spring release. Our primary focus this release was in supporting the health of our customers' orgs with a settings health check. EDA is a powerful platform, and our education system administrators often have many responsibilities. Settings Health Check enables our users to routinely check on the health of their settings and configurations. Running Settings Health Check will notify them if something needs their attention and how to update their settings and configurations to keep their EDA instance in good working order. The Settings Health Check will allow our Education Cloud products that are built on top of EDA to add additional settings and configuration checks to this tool, making this an education platform tool supporting all of our solutions and our entire customer base. Let's jump into our demo and see how customers can set up and run their first settings health check. Before we begin the demo, let's see how we can enable the settings health check feature for a profile. To do this, let's go to Salesforce Setup, click on Users, then go to Profiles, and clicking on your desired profile. For this demo, I'm gonna click on System Administrator. Then click on Edit, and find Settings Health Check in the Tab section. And enable the tab. Just a quick note here that current customers will also need to create their own tab for the Settings Health Check component. And for now, let's save our changes. Great, users can now add this to their desired app as a tab, or it can be found by searching for the settings health check in the app launcher. Before running a health check, we can see a description of what the tool does, the last time a settings health check was run, and a run health check button. Clicking the run button will check our EDA settings and return several health checks for us to review we can see that these checks are run and returned very quickly. Health checks are grouped in expandable and collapsible cards. Cards that contain any failed health checks are returned expanded, and cards that contained all past health checks are returned collapsed. This allows the user to focus on checks that need their attention, but still gives them the ability to expand any card to view the checks that were run and returned as past. Let's take a look at a card that needs our attention to see what information it gives us. The health checks are presented in a table format. The rows are individual health checks. Failed checks are automatically sorted to the top and past checks are automatically sorted to the bottom. The columns for the tables are status, which can be returned as past, failed, or warning. Setting column tells us the specific setting or configuration that the health check is for. Description explains why the check passed or failed. And finally, recommended fix tells us where and how to update our org in order to fix the configuration. Let's work through an example together. Here we can see the account model card. I've passed three or four checks. This failed check tells me it's for the household account record type setting. If I expand the description, I can see that the group account record type that I'm using is no longer active. Let's see how we can fix this. 
Going to recommended fix, I'm going to click the header and expand it so I can see all of the information it contains. Here we can see this configuration is on the accounts and contacts tab in EDA settings. And I can either update that setting or I can activate the record type on account in Salesforce setup. In this scenario, this is an older record type that we were using for households. And my institution decided to deprecate the group account record type and adopt the household record type that EDA provides out of the box. It seems that we deactivated this old record type, but we never updated our EDA settings. So let's go to the account and contact page in EDA settings to fix this. Heading over to EDA settings, then as per health checks recommended fix, we should go to account and contacts tab. Let me click edit so we can edit the configuration and find the household account record type setting. I know I no longer want to use group and I'm gonna select household account here. And then I'm gonna save my changes. Now, let's return to the health check. I can run this setting health check again to make sure my actions have fixed the previous failed check or checks. Now I can see that all of my health checks are returned pass and that no further action is needed from me. I could expand all of the cards and see all of the checks that have passed if I'd like. And that is a quick look at the new settings health check that's delivered with EDA for Spring 21. That wraps up our preview for education features for Spring 21 release. We appreciate you all tuning in. Thank you and stay well. <laughs>